Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is a new feature that was recently released in Power Automate Desktop that allows us to securely use sensitive text. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this is important. So naturally whenever you have RPA solutions you're going to run into legacy apps or applications that don't have some sort of integrated authentication like Windows authentication. As a result you need to provide some sort of credentials. It could be username, it could be password, it could be a secret if it was say an API call. Now how can we manage this data and how can we prevent this data from showing up in our logs? Because we know that both cloud flows and desktop flows have rich logging capabilities and we don't want those passwords to show up in our logs, especially if we've got situations where we might have an operations team that shouldn't have access to that information but they see it because they're trying to manage and maintain the app itself. Now what we can do is we can use a service called Azure Key Vault as a key store that will help us to ensure our secrets are stored safely in a secure location and when we combine that with the features called secure input secure outputs inside of Cloudflows and sensitive text inside of Power Automate Desktop we can ensure we have end-to-end -end management of sensitive data, including credentials and secrets. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure Serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Now, before we get into the demo, I do want to talk about some prerequisite steps. And this is mainly in the Key Vault side of things, uh, but we'll need this information in order to establish our connection to the Azure Key Vault service. Now, what you see here is uh, a screenshot from the Azure portal where I have gone into Azure Active Directory and I've gone ahead and created an app registration. And we need this app registration in order to go ahead and to create a service principal. And so I'll talk a little bit more about this in the demo itself. Then on top of that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Azure Key Vault. Now, I'm using an existing Key Vault. Uh, it's easy to provision. You can just add a new service and select Key Vault. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna create our secret. Now, in this case, the secret represents the password that we're going to use in order to open up a password protected Excel spreadsheet. And so that's what we're going to do is we're going to create a secret uh, from right over here. We'll provide our value in the value statement itself. And then what we need to do is we need to assign an access policy because we want to limit who can actually go ahead and retrieve secrets from the key vault itself. And that's what we're gonna do by assigning an access policy and ensuring that that service principal or that app registration that we previously created has access to it. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the demo. And uh, as I mentioned before, the, the purpose of this demo is we're going to have a cloud flow that will go ahead, retrieve our secret from our key vault service. Then we're gonna use the secure input, secure output feature. And you can see that by the lock here to go ahead and call a desktop flow. And we're going to pass in that Excel password as part of that interaction. And then we're gonna show that the password is not leaked into the logs and that we've been able to securely transition that, that password from the cloud to the ground. So let's go ahead and jump right into a Okay, so I'm in the Azure portal and I can go ahead and just search for key vaults. And I have one that was already created, so I'm just leveraging that called serverless key vault you can easily go ahead and add one from here. Now, what I've done inside of the key vault is uh, I've gone ahead and created a secret and I can go ahead and do so by clicking on this generate 
slash import button itself. And so this is how we would go about doing so. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, we can create it manually. It's not gonna be a certificate, provide a name, provide a secret. And then we have some optional values here if we want, and then we can go ahead and create it. And so that's, that's all fine and dandy. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to have an app registration. And so this allows us to go ahead and to use a service principle when we're gonna go ahead and provide our connection details itself. So we can simply click on new registration, provide a name. Uh, we can use just single tenants in my example, and we don't have to really worry about this URI, this optional URI. That'll create our app registration. And then what we can go ahead and do, I'll just click into the one that I've previously created, is we're gonna need some information. We're gonna have to go ahead and to create a secret, uh, essentially like a password. And so that's what I've got going on over here is I do have gone ahead and created a client secret. You can go ahead and choose an expiration date if you want. And then on top of that, we're gonna need our application or client ID, and then also our directory or tenant ID. And that'll be information that we'll need when we're creating our connection inside of our Cloudflow. Now this becomes pretty important because now that we've got this set up, we need to assign an access policy and allow this service principal to be able to go ahead and to retrieve the secret from Key Vault itself. So in our Key Vault, what we have is we have access policies. And so I've created one right here. And what I can do is I can add another one. And then here I have the ability to choose from a configure from a template. Now I'm only interested in secret management, so I can go ahead and use this template. It'll give me all of the different operations. Uh, I don't necessarily need to have all of these. I would need to have get and list though. Um, but let's say I, I don't want to give this uh, service principle the ability to set or delete. I could remove those as well. Then what I need to do is go ahead and select a service principle. In this case, I had called mine RPA desktop Excel. I can go ahead and select that and then go ahead and add. Now, one thing to note when you do this, make sure you hit the save button here uh, once it's there. I've already have one here, so it's not allowing me to do it, but do make sure that when it's, uh, you're on this screen, you do hit save. Otherwise, it won't, uh, won't, allow, it won't actually stick. Now, that concludes the Azure side of our prerequisites. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start essentially at the, at the end of our process and then work our way back. So I'm now in Power Automate Desktop. As I discussed, we want the ability to go ahead and to open up a password protected Excel document. So when this Excel document is opened, we're gonna get prompted for a password. And essentially what we wanna do is feed our secret into this password so that we can go ahead and manipulate this specific Excel document. Now, I'm just focusing on this part of the process so we can see we only have one step in our our script here. Now to do this, we need to create an input. So we can go ahead and create an input, provide a name. Now what's important here is that we go ahead and change our data type to be sensitive text. And then when we go ahead and save this input, it will be available to our Cloudflow. And so I've got one that's already created here. And uh, you can see we've got sensitive text and this will allow that input to be passed securely. Then. When it comes to Excel, what we can do is we select this drop down, and we wanna select password input as variable, and then we can go ahead and select our variable from our list because we've defined it as an input. And so that's what we see right there. So let's go ahead, let's cancel that. We do wanna make sure that this is all saved, and when it's saved, we can now access that from our Cloudflow. Okay, so I am in my Cloudflow. It's quite simple, I've got manually trigger flow. And then I've got my key vault action here. So how did I go ahead and set this up? Let's go ahead, let's click on add an action. Let's type in key vault. And then what we're gonna do is say get secret. We wanna use that operation. Now, this is where we need to go ahead and create a connection using that service principle. So what I'm gonna do is add a new connection just so that you can see this process. Then let's click on connect with service principle. This is where we need that information from Azure. Right, so I talked about our client ID or application ID, that client secret that we went ahead and created, and then also the tenant ID. And so this will allow us to connect 
into Key Vault using these credentials. Now, this is where that access policy becomes really important. If you don't set that access policy up, you're going to get an error and you will not be able to go ahead and to select this dropdown that will iterate what are the keys that we do have. Now, in this case, we talked about it being the RPA Desktop Excel. So this is great. This will allow us to retrieve that, that password, but how do we ensure that this doesn't show up in our run history logs? And the way we do that, we click on the ellipsis, we click on settings, and then we turn on secure inputs and secure outputs. And so naturally secure inputs will be, what are the inputs that are passed into the action? And then secure outputs naturally is, what is the information that's being passed out? Now I just in, turned on both for just uh, simplicity here, uh, but you do have some granularity there where you can choose uh, what direction you want the information to be essentially obfuscated from your logs. Now here's where we're gonna go ahead and call that desktop flow. Uh, we can see it's called sensitive inputs, that was the name of it. The run mode is gonna be attended here. And then what we can use is the Excel password. And so what we can see here is when we use Excel password, that's, and this is basically the value coming from our get secret call, it is secure, right? We can see that um, we have, because we've turned on secure inputs, secure outputs, it does show up as a secure item. Naturally, we want to ensure that this data remains secure. So once again, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the secure input, secure outputs, just to make sure that we don't have any leakage of credentials in our logs. So that's great, let's go ahead, let's hit save. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to go and run this desktop flow. Now this won't be super interesting because all we're gonna essentially do is open up Excel, but we will be passing that password in through the channels, the secure channels, and be able to launch our Excel spreadsheet. Okay, our Excel spreadsheet loaded. There was no interaction, didn't have to put a password in. So looks like that is all working properly. Now let's make sure that nothing is leaked into our logs. So let's go ahead, let's click on these actions. We can see that the content can't be shown due to security configuration. And then same thing here, right? So we don't have any leakage. Now the byproduct of this is that you also don't see other information as well being passed. So that is something that you will want to evaluate when you are building out these solutions. Now this is the cloud flow, but let's go ahead, let's see what's going on in the desktop flow side of things as well. So let's click on my flows, desktop flows, then sensitive inputs. And then we can see this was the execution history. And here we just have a single action. So let's go ahead and let's click on it. Let's see inputs. And here we can see that we have the action for our Excel activity and as a result we have these this password that's been obfuscated right it's got stars that represent it so we know that the password is not being leaked into the logs and then nothing here in the output that is uh, sensitive in nature so that's the demo that shows you how you can do this end to end and ensure that you do not have any secret or credential leakage when using power automate and cloud flows all right, so that concludes another episode on the channel. Thanks for checking it out. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to do so. Go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Obviously, you're on YouTube, and I appreciate that. So any sort of likes or subscribes, comments, always welcome. And uh, thanks again for checking this video out, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.